Hi, my name is Ty. I have two brothers and a little sister. Since 2009, we have not had a home to live in because it was stolen. Stolen by one of the gangs of Thai people in Phuket, who target the assets of foreigners. My dad is British, and he takes care of us all. A lot of terrible things have been done to him by many people and by the justice system. This story will open your eyes about Thai property leases. In 2006, there was the Thai Lee Card, the idea and policy of the government under Mr. Thaksin. The membership promised many benefits. One of these was that foreigners could buy a small amount of land to build a family home. Dad was happy he would finally have a way to secure a home for our family to live. A contract for the con construction of a new house was made and building was in progress. To cut a long story short, taxing was removed by a military coup. The Thai elite program benefit yet to be finalized was put on hold for a while. This meant that could not register the house because the land ownership benefit were not finalized and foreigner are not allowed to have a home in Thailand very easily. That lawyer said the answer was to put the property in the name of my mum and then for Dad to take a 30 year lease to protect his asset. So that is what Dad did. A lot of foreigners do this to stop bad people stealing away their homes. It's very normal. Foreigners think leases are secured in Thailand, or you had better sing again. Dad has copied the lease law from the Thai Civil and Commercial Code book. It has only nine sections and doesn't seem to cover many things. Lots of properties are worth millions of baht, so the law must be strong to protect them. Dad says... Thai law lets people agree what they want in the leases. That sounds okay. But then, you have to trust your lawyer. The problem is, many lawyers are not very good. Some are corrupt and some do not like foreigners and help the Thai person even if the foreigner is paying them. That is a lot of trust to put in finding a needle in a haystack. There are thousands of foreigners with expensive properties on the leases, which have to be made by the Thai lawyers. When things go wrong, you will see there is not much protection from the Thai justice system. It relies so much on the professional integrity of Thai lawyers to fight your case honestly, and a lot don't, especially if you are a foreigner. What is going to happen when ASEAN starts and many more foreigners are doing business here? That says the laws need to be stronger and provide some better protection to foreigners if it wants foreign investment. This will help Thai people just the same. On the 3rd February 2009, an agent working for a moneylender used a power of attorney to cancel that lease. That signature had been forged. At the same time, and on the same day, my mum and the moneylender immediately transferred my home to him. Dad, of course, knew nothing about it. We all lived in this house and knew nothing about the sale until mum ran away in the middle of 2010. That is when the problem began for our family. We never saw the money lender at all up to then. The money lender, of course, knew it was that house for sure, because there was no reason for his agent to cancel the lease, pretending to be authorized by dad. The agent was not necessary because mom was there at the land office 
the same day to do the sale with the moneylender. If Dad wanted to cancel the lease, he would have given a power of attorney to Mum. He would not have authorized some dodgy Thai man he had never even met. The moneylender, his agent, and Mum were all together at the land office. The same time, so I think you will see those three people all knew exactly that they were stealing. They also knew that Dad knew nothing about our home being sold off to an evil moneylender. One of the gang is already in prison after admitting the crime. After Mum ran away, some men came to our house and threatened my dad. Then Mum called my dad. Telling him the money lender had sent a message: if we did not get out of Phuket, someone will hurt my dad and kidnap me or one of my brothers. We were at school, so we didn't know about this until Dad told us a little while ago. Mum wasn't living with us anymore. It was a very sad time for all of us. Because of the threat, Dad made some fake contract with the money lender. Pretending he would buy a house back, Dad knew the money lender was greedy, so he would leave us all alone. If the money lender thought he could cheat us out of even more money, the money lender wanted three percent per month interest, which was one hundred and thirty-five thousand baht per month. Dad just needed four weeks to organize us, running away and moving out of the house. And the fake contract bought us some safe time to do that. Dad did not have any money left because the same money lender had stolen another house from Dad. At the same time, that two business has also been stolen by a different money lender. All this stuff Dad found out around the same time. The same agent worked for both money lenders and was involved in the whole scam. A lot of cheating people all working together to steal everything that had. Dad had no intention of paying the money lender any money. Anyway, he could not because these two gang had stolen everything. But that fake contract did stop the money lender hurting Dad or us for four weeks until the first payments were due. The money lender told Dad to pay another person, giving a. An- Name and a bank account number. Dad noticed it wasn't the money lender name and just thought it's typical such a cheating person would be trying to avoid paying tax. Dad was never going to pay anything anyway, and so no more about that name at the time. We were already packing all our belongings at the ho- at home to run away. It is always sad moving home. Can you imagine how much more terrible it is if you have nowhere to go and no money left either, as well as running away from people trying to harm you? I know that was sick because the next time I saw him, his head was all shaky and looked very sad and white. I don't want to talk about that. It makes me sad too. That knew a lot of people in Phuket. And a friend of one of them said, "Maybe this lawyer could help, as he was very good." That lawyer telephoned Dad, who went to meet the, him. The lawyer said Dad could not sue for the lease back, and his only choice was to try to find a cheaper lender. He said Dad should speak to the man who had introduced him. That foreigner man said he would buy the house and take care of it for us for about forty-nine thousand baht per month. Dad had run out of time. The money lender first interest payments would be due within a few days, so Dad had no choice but to agree. Dad was really scared because he had sent us away to keep us safe, and all our toy. And everything in the house was in boxes. I don't think he knew what to do really. 
because everyone was cheating him, and we had nothing left. It was not his choice that was taken away by the moneylender and his gang. It was the only thing that could do. So we agreed to let the man buy our home from the other moneylender and keep it safe for us. At least we would be safe from the violence the gang had promised. That paid about 1.5 million baht to the foreigner for keeping the house safe while he was fighting the other court cases. Then one day he saw the fake contract and the piece of paper the money lender had given him with the other name and bank account number. He wanted Dad to pay. Dad was shocked. On that piece of paper was the same name as the lawyer for the foreigner. The foreigner Dad had been paying to keep, to keep the house safe. Dad was very angry because he realized he had been cheated again. That lawyer knew the moneylender before Dad met him and knew the lease had been cancelled and the house stolen from Dad. The house had been bought in the name of a company, which the foreigner man had said was his own company. Of course, that was normal, because Thailand does not make it easy for foreigners to buy any property. Dad checked out the business and saw it was owned just by three Thai people. One was a man who worked as assistant to the lawyer. One was a man with the same surname as the lawyer and another person with a small number of shares. In fact, the business was not the foreigner man business at all. It was controlled by people very close to the lawyer himself. The man, the money lender, had told Dad to pay in the very beginning. At any time, those shareholders could meet and sell the house. The foreigner was not even a director of the company at the time, so the people in control of our house were the lawyer and his friend. The foreigner has now been made the director of the company, but that does not change anything. The shares are still all held by people close to the lawyer, people that does not trust at all. At any time, they could sell the house and there is nothing the foreigner could do about it. They can remove the foreigner as director at any time too, and there is nothing anyone can do to stop them because they own all the shares. So Dad took a criminal case against the gang and another civil case against the gang as well, as the company which had bought the house. That does not think the foreigner really knows that he has no control over the company at all. But Dad did not agree to put his house in the control of friends and college of the lawyer who knew the moneylender from the beginning. Should people be able to cheat you out of your lease so easily? Ty says no. We have just got the judgment from the Phuket court. In the next video, we will talk about the court case and the continuing lies, deceit and cheating that goes on in the justice system by criminals and their lawyers. In the meantime, please like and share this video so people understand how they can lose their property so easily and how hard it can be to try to get it back, if that is even possible.